Hi, good morning, everybody. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Welcome to Checkbook NYC. Um, my name is Nicole Boone. I'm the project manager on Checkbook. I'm joined by Ed Sokolowski, who is our executive director of systems development for the controller's office. And I want to thank Giselle um, Estrella for putting this together so that we can all learn a little bit more about Checkbook and learn how to use it more effectively. So when you come to the Checkbook site, you have your different domains. We've got the budget domain, revenue domain, spending domain, contracts, payroll, and then we have what we call our feature dashboards. When you come to the checkbook site, you get taken directly to the spending domain. So I'm just gonna walk us through the features of the spending domain so you understand how checkbook moves and functions. So first of all, you, below the main dashboard, you're going to see a bunch of different graphic presentations. The first is a year-to-year -year on total spending. The second is the top 10 agencies by disbursement amount, top 10 contracts by disbursement amount, and top 10 vendors by disbursement amount. On each of these graphics, you can hover over and get another level of information. You can see the actual numbers, and you can always click on grid view to get the background data on this, and you can export that data. So where the top navigation is showing that the total spending for the city is $78 billion for the fiscal year, and up here in the corner, we have our filter that shows what fiscal year we're in. The lower one breaks out that spending into the different types of spending. So we've got your total amount, which is the 78 billion, and then that breaks out into payroll spending, capital spending, contract spending, trust and agency spending, and other spending. Then we come down to our widgets. So you can look at all of the top checks for the city. You can look at the top five agencies for the city, top five expense categories. This is a new one, MOX registered COVID contract spending. We're gonna cover that a little bit later and payroll spending top five agencies by payroll. So we're just gonna scroll back up to the top. So for any of these widgets, if you wanna see more than the top five, you can hit the plus button and you will get the top 150 results. Well, now I wanna play with this information. So I'm gonna click the details link and it's gonna take me to a narrow down faceted search page. We're just waiting for the page to load. I might want to narrow down my results to be a little bit more specific to what I'm looking for. So say I'm only interested in the Department of Education, I can narrow down to just the Department of Education. Maybe I only want to see one vendor in the Department of Education, so I just click on that one vendor. So now that I have just the spending transactions for the Department of Education for the one vendor I'm looking for, I can now go up here and I can export my results into a CSV or ex um, into an Excel file. So this has 100,000 rows to um, download. Great, we can download that. If it goes over that amount, it means that we might have to do a data feed search and we're gonna go into that a little bit later. So let's go back to our spending page. Great, so when we're brought to the spending page, we're at the top level for the city. We can go down a level, and so say I just want to see the spending for a particular agency. I can come up here to the citywide agencies. I can go over to whichever agency I'm interested. I'm going to use the Office of the Controller. I click on it, and my page will refresh with all of the same widgets, all the same information, but now for the Controller's Office. Great. So I can see my top checks for the controller's office, my top departments now, because we have another layer of information on this level, top five expense categories, top contracts by contract amount, by spending amount, sorry, and COVID spending, which in this, for this scenario, for this agency, we don't have that information or we have it, but we just don't have anything. So let me take us over to the contracts area. I'm going to click on the contracts domain. And now my bottom navigation is different. Now this bar is broken out into expense, active expense contracts, registered expense contracts, active revenue contracts, registered revenue contracts, pending contracts, expense contracts, 
and pending revenue contracts. The difference between an active contract and a registered contract is this. A registered contract is any contract whose period of performance starts with this fiscal year and was registered in this fiscal year. An active contract is any contract that's period of performance is prior or could be the fiscal year, but the date of the contract's end date is that's an active contract. So a registered contract is a subset of the active contract. Uh, we start up where we've got our top master agreements. Then we've got our top five contracts, top five contracts by modification. So this is a really important widget because we can have contracts that life period is many years and can go and, and there might be a lot of changes to that contract. So this is a really quick way because we we're looking by modification to see a contract that has been modified and the percent difference is a lot different than where we started. It might not mean anything. It might just be a contract that's been extended and extended and so therefore we've added money to it. But like the um, city time issue, it might show a contract that is going awry. It might show that there's just a lot of spending on something. It might be something that lends to taking a second look. Um, we've got our top five prime vendors, top five award methods, top five departments, contracts by industry, and then contracts by size. Now, let's just say we wanted to see a particular vendor for this agency. I can click on that vendor, just click on Wells Fargo. And just like we did with the controller's office, this entire page will refresh just for that vendor. So it goes down from the citywide level to the agency level and can go all the way down to the vendor level, and you can see how many contracts the vendor has with this agency. You can see what their contracts are by, you can click on that amount and find out more, or we can click on the actual contract ID and be taken to a detailed contract ID page. Great. So a contract ID page, obviously it starts at the top with the contract number. We can see the contract's current amount, its original amount, its spent to date. We can see all of the general information for the contract, end date, start date, registration date. We can see whether the contract has sub-vendors. But what's really interesting about the contract ID page is that we can look at different modifications that have taken place on the contract over time. So we can see that there's been 26 versions of this contract. Um, we can see that between these two, the price of this contract hasn't changed. The current amount and the original amount haven't changed. So therefore, whatever change took place on this contract, it wasn't a monetary change to the contract. But this is just a really great way of seeing where modifications have taken place to the contract and that they've taken place and how long the contract's been out there. So let me take us back up to the top. I'm going to hit the home button. We're back in the spending domain, and I'm going to show us how the feature dashboards interact with the spending and contracts domain. So these are, this is the spending feature dashboard. It says spending feature dashboard when we're in the spending domain. You know we're in the spending domain because the blue is all lit up. So this, w, this MWB number are our minority businesses, business owners. This shows how much money has gone citywide to MWBEs this year and then how much money has gone to sub vendors. If I click on the MWBE feature dashboard, the page is gonna refresh. The sub vendors are now showing how many of the MWBs were MWB sub vendors and how much they got paid. We do a comparison between non-MWB money and we see the share of MWB. We can hover over this to see the breakout of all the MWBEs. This page has refreshed to show MWB vendor. We can see their MWB category next to the name of the vendor. And it shows all the same widgets that we would expect. Now, if I click on the sub vendor, there we go. So now the page is refreshing just for sub vendor information, for MWB sub vendor information. So we can see our MWB share. We can see all of the same widgets that we would expect to see, but now we get to see for each agency, we can see the number of sub-vendors they have. 
the spending by sub-vendors, the percent paid to sub-vendors. We can see our top five sub-vendors. We can see what their ethnicity is. And we can see the top five subcontracts. Just as a note, subcontractor information does not come from FMS. Put in in our pay employment or PIP, which is the payment information portal. I got it. And that information is put in by each of the vendors. So garbage in, garbage out. Sometimes they fill fields, sometimes they don't. So if there's missing information, it's often just an input error. Come back up to the top. Now, say I just wanted this feature dashboard to show for Black American. I can hit this little triangle, I can click on Black American, and this entire page will refresh just to show Black American numbers. So we can see the overall, we can see the share, we can see the checks, etc. Okay. So now I'm going to show us some ways that we can search for information. Is our search bar, is our smart search bar. I use this smart search bar really for um, the beginning of, of uh, data mining. Like if I'm if I'm if I'm not really sure what I'm looking for, I might use the smart search bar. Um, if I'm just searching for a particular vendor, per se, um, I might use the smart search bar. So let's just look for a vendor. Our smart search bar is acting really slowly, but there we go. It should pre-populate once you start typing. And you just choose which of these you want. And again, it'll bring you to a narrow down search page. You can choose whether you want to see if there was contracts here. We can choose contracts. There's just spending, so we're going to look at the spending transactions. If I want to export this information, I can come up here and export it. And let's just hit the export so you can see what that looks like. Great. And we can download the data and export it. I tend, because my searches are a little more focused, I tend to use advanced search a little more often. Bring us over to advanced search. Great. So in advanced search, I can choose to be in the citywide or I could choose one of our different areas like Economic Development Corporation or NYCHA. We're going to get into that a little bit later. I can choose my agency. Department and expense category are tied to the agency. They, they differ by agency. So once I've chosen my agency, I can choose a department I might want to look at. Once I choose my department, I can choose a particular expense category. See, I want to know what office equipment is for the office of the controller. And I can choose which year I would like to know that for. Sorry, it takes a minute to get the results. There's an incredible amount of transactional data and checkbooks. So when we're using these searches, it's searching through all of the data and checkbook. There's over 6 million rows of data. Great. So once it's pulled up my transactions, I can export them into a file. This is a small one, so that's easily exportable. Download the data and then open it up and use it however I'd like. So coming back to our advanced search. We've added some new features to the advanced search to make certain searches easier for you, certain searches that we feel are um, just really important for the public to have. So we've added this catastrophic event filter. Right now, we only have COVID-19, thankfully. I click COVID-19 and I click all years and submit. Then I can see all of the spending transactions that have associated budget codes to COVID-19. I'm just going to interrupt the process because I'm not, not going to put this into a, to a file but so that you know where to get it. This ties back to those widgets I said that we were going to talk about, um, which were the mocks registered COVID-19. So once we've got, so this is all of our, all of our spending that has budget codes associated with COVID-19. So now I'm just going to go back to the spending page and go back to that widget. So this new widget is a subset of that table in our advanced search. The advanced search has any spending that has a COVID-19 budget code associated with it. This widget shows all of our MOX registered contracts for COVID-19 that have contract spending, which is a subset of that entire table, if that's of an interest to you. And we have the same widget and the same um, 
the same filter and vamp search for contracts and for budget. So if you're looking for specific numbers on COVID, you can use that table to narrow down on that. Some other features that we haven't gone over up here, we have other government entities. So these are not entities that you, these are, these are quasi-government agencies, meaning that they um, accept money not just from the city, but from state and from federal. And so they don't go through our financial management system. So we've had to separate them out. We've got EDC, which is the New York City Economic Development Corporation. EDC functions both as a vendor and as an agency. So um, on the city side of things, they are a vendor. And the agency that they go through is Ed Help Me Out uh, it would always be associated with. I will come back to you on the answer to that. Oh, wait, I can do it as a vendor. Small business services. Thank you. So if we wanted, so we have this little toggle that you can view back, back and forth. So you can view it as a vendor. And if you're viewing as a vendor, that's information coming in from FMS. But then you can view it as an agency, and as an agency, we're, we're pulling that information directly from the EDC, and that's just a more comprehensive view. Uh, sorry, the opposite. If you're viewing it as an agency, you're viewing it. Uh, you're right, Nicole. You're viewing. Oh, I was right at first time. Okay, thank you. You're right. You're right, Nicole. Um, New York Housing Authority is is large, and we're going to do a separate. Uh, drill down on that because we could spend as much time on NYCHA as we could spend on the entire city side. So we're going to save that for a separate demonstration. But if you wanted to see NYCHA information, you would just click over here with the New York City Housing Authority information. And it works differently. So that's why we're saving this for a separate demo. Other things, we have special analysis up here where you can see a federal stimulus um, fund tracker to see where those stimulus dollars are going. We have um, featured trends, year by year trends that go back for 20 years. We can, so we can do year by year comparisons. You can click on whatever trend line you're looking at and you can see the behind the scenes data for that trend. These trends are supply or information supplied by the um, formerly called the CAFR, the Comprehensive Annual Financial Report. And you can export any of that information into a file. But what I really want to show you right now is data feeds. So I mentioned earlier that when we're working in a search, you might not, you might get over 100,000 results. So in that case, the file's too big to um, download into an Excel file. So then we're going to come over to data feeds. You can download over, you can download up to 200,000 rows of data into a data feed. So I'm going to click on which domain I'm interested in. I'm interested in finding out spending information. I want to find out spending information for the office of the controller. So I'm going to choose, I'm going to roll right by it. I'm going to choose what year I'd like that information for. And then I can choose exactly which columns of information I want in my export. I'm just going to choose them all and submit. I know that this isn't going to be an enormous file, but if it were, say if it were um, at least 200 rows or more, I wouldn't just be able to download this information. It might, it might take them some time to process it in the background. So this screen would show me a tracking number that I could come back to. I would put that tracking number over here, hit go, and then I would receive my file. Um, we also have an MWB resource page. We can see um, MWBE grade results. We can look at interactive maps. There's an agency summary page to get a little bit more refined information about what's going on with the different agencies and how many um, MWBs they're working with. And then over here in the help section, we have our site navigation and glossary in case you're unfamiliar with any terms we're using, unfamiliar with how we come to certain numbers. And then very importantly, so you don't have to sit through one of these with me every time, there are instructional videos that take you step by step through the functionality so that if any of this gets lost on you, if you need a little refresher, you can just do your own tutorial at your pace. So we've been moving pretty fast at this point. I wouldn't mind moving to questions and just seeing what we have. 
and then maybe diving in a little deeper on any particular part. So let me Great. stop sharing. We have a few questions that came in um, through chat. Uh, I had turned off the microphone uh, while you were presenting. Um, so presenters, uh, or excuse me, participants, uh, you now have the ability to unmute yourself. Uh, just remember, we're still on camera. If you would like to have your questions sub submitted anonymously, uh, please submit it to myself um, and I will be able to, to echo the question. Um, so the first few questions that we have here are, uh, do purchase orders show up in Checkbook 2.0? Um, and then someone would like to know the data source and the frequency of the data being refreshed um, and then the third question is, uh, why is there a discrepancy amongst the MOCs publishing data set? Sure. Let's, let's hit the first one first, because I think that's important. Um, we get all of our information from the financial management system. It's refreshed 20, on a 24-hour basis, so daily refreshed. We're about 24 hours behind, though, in terms of when it was input into SMS and when we receive it. Um, do purchase orders show up the same way? Purchase orders um, in checkbook look like BO ones. They're they're considered. It would be a a number a contract number that starts with BO one. It's a child contract to a master agreement, which is an MA one. So you would only see it on the spending side because it's not a technical contract. It's literally like a spending down on the MA one, which is the contract. So you will see all purchase orders or deal ones in the spending domain. So the data source frequency, um, and then uh, why is there a discrepancy amongst uh, MOX publishing data sets? What, what does that mean? Well, yeah, I'm not, um, I'm not clear. Yeah, I'm not I don't clear know. That I'm, uh, if that person could just ask that question again, um in in the chat uh privately um they're I, they're I asking um, so i see so i'm i'm not sure exactly okay. the answer to your question but i would guess that mox is probably publishing their mwb data i haven't seen it so i don't know but based on contract amounts and we do everything based on spending with um mwbs we don't we look at at the spending is the most important you can have a contract with the city, but are you getting, is that, is that contract actually moving and are you getting paid? Like that's, that's important to us, whether they're actually receiving money. So that could be a reason for the discrepancy. Ed, you might want to. Yeah. yeah, for uh, Mox does not use spending data for their quarterly reporting. They have, they have their goals, the contract goals they set up and they report on those contract goals. We only use, we, for our MWB data, and we only report on spending itself and making a grade and everything we've done on the, is based on the money paid to an MWB vendor. So there is a, there is a difference on how we look at the data and how MOTS looks at the data. Um, there was another question about how frequently Checkbook is updated with the spending information from FMS, which is every 24 hours. Um, yes, daily. Daily, um, just reading through here as they're coming in fast and furiously. Um, can you describe the ETL process with all of the mapping of the various sources and data feeds in FMS? Um, that might be something that's more advanced to the question. All right, so, so what we do is we, on a daily basis, uh, depending on activity, we can get up to 30 different interface files from, from FMS. We take that we and then checkbook itself is built on. We have about a hundred and we have a couple hundred tables in checkbook. We take that we take all that data and we and that ETL takes that data and uploads those various tables in an overnight in an overnight process. And then during that process, if there's new contract data, new spending data, we pre we update all these tables that you see on the on the widgets. So that information gets updated on the widgets, and when when you look at checkbook in the next morning you'll see that all the data in the widgets are, are, are pre-populated. Pre the part of it where, where Nicole was actually doing data feeds and extracts, that's real life data. So we're going against the transactions. Um, so I don't know if I, did I answer that question, hopefully. Uh, I think it's a very detailed question uh, to be answered. So maybe something that could be uh, discussed 
uh, or if you want to point out any type of documentation that you have on the GitHub and share that, um, we can always follow up. Um, just to go through some of these other questions here, um, what does Mox use for the checkbook MWVE data for their quarterly reporting or uh, rating of agency MWVE utilization? Mox does not okay. use checkbook data. Okay. Uh, can you explain the difference between uh, DO1 and PO abbreviations in checkbook? I, I there are no explain. Yeah, as Nicole explained, the DO1s are actually hooked up to a up to that MA1. Purchase orders are standalone, Nicole. I don't think they're linked to a PO is just a smaller uh, a, a smaller uh, purchase that's not linked to a DO, to, to a master agreement. And again, you'll find them in the spending domain. You, you'll only find um, PODs, PONs, and DO1s, which are all spending down. Um, you will only find them in the spending area. Great. Um, somebody's asking about a NYCHA-specific uh, NYCHA training. We're definitely going to do it. It's not on the calendar yet. Um, we're working on that date. So we will, we will get back to you on that. Um, for parties that use checkbook data to analyze and report on data, what steps are in place to ensure the reliability, accuracy, and completeness of the data extracted or accessed from checkbook? The beauty of checkbook is we do not change any of the data that comes in from our financial management system or any other data feeds. We go through, we have extensive user acceptance testing criteria we follow. And we're constantly checking back with uh, FMS and our various, you know, we have other applications where we can cross check data and we are always looking at that data. So the beauty of it is we don't change the data. The data you see is what is given to us by FMS, NYCHA and EDC. Great. Um, here is another question. Um, here are a few more private questions. Uh, is there a key for deciphering an agency's sub-departments if they're not clearly labeled? For example, in advanced search, if you can select the Department of Transportation as the agency, the departments listed within the DOT include uh, hundreds of entries that are just numeric codes. That is all you will see. There is no translation yeah. for that. And that's what's in FMS. That's how, that's how DOT defines it in FMS, and that's the data that comes down to us. There's no, there's, that's the labeling they gave it. You would have to go back to, do, to, to the Department of Transportation to understand what those departments are and what they mean. Interesting. Uh, okay, uh, here's an echoing uh, comment of um, getting uh, ETL documentation uh, and data dictionaries uh, being published publicly so that way people can have a better understanding. That's just a request. Um, and then the last question that I have here in the chat is, uh, if you pull up a direct order DO on checkbook, can you use that DO number to locate the master agreement number? Yes, yes, we, we do every, so if you export your data on your DO1, you will see the, the parent master agreement within that extract. It'll, it'll be right on the same line as the DO1. Um, and in fact, if, and, and in opposite, if you're pulling down the master agreement, you will get all of the associated DO1s underneath that master agreement as well in your extract. All right. Thank you for so many questions in the chat. Does anybody want to unmute themselves? I see Pravin. Yes. Yes. Hi, good morning, everybody. Um, and just add Nicole, this question in terms of API, is there any of these uh, analysis that we have? Can we generate API? Um, so by the date where, where you go for data feeds in that top line on the navigation, there is a tab for API. Yes, I see and that. Only click, thing is, yes. That's limited to only thousand records. I see, you know, tech for call. Is there, is there always a limitation on the API? Or can we retrieve more data dynamically? There is at this time, but I mean, we can always discuss about about changing that. And and we haven't had a lot of people using the APIs, so 
it hasn't really come up, but we, we could we could discuss that for sure. Thank you. All right, we have another one here in the chat. Uh, what would be a reliable system to use to track MWBE utilization? I've used Checkbook before to determine my agency's quarterly utilization, but it sounds like this is not the correct platform to use. Utilization is um, is a city council or, or mock, yeah, based on based on the contract amount on total contract amounts of the NWBs. So if you're tracking with checkbook that checkbook is, is based on spending, it's probably not it's probably not correct it's going to be correct. So maybe so that, Mox yeah. can give you something more you know Yeah the, util, the utilization would have to come from either the agency or Mox directly. Right. Hmm. Do you get a thank you for that? I mean, the last the last comment the last comment I'll make um, again I'll thank everybody for coming. This is great. Um, there is a you now. There's a couple things we didn't cover, right? We you know, we focused on the most most areas. Everybody's interested in contract spending and how to do searches. There is a budget domain, there is a revenue domain, and we do have payroll too. Now payroll comes from our from the FISA from again so it's from uh, the FISA system, and so that's everybody's payroll in the city. And the budget revenue are are a little more complicated. It's interesting, but people don't really really focus on it that much. So that's why we're really just focusing on the areas where people, as a general rule, when we get inquiries from the press or good government groups or uh, from uh, other agencies, is on spending and and on uh, contracts. So that's what we focused on. That. Great. Um, we have last the last two questions that I'm going to throw at you, um, and then we're gonna we're gonna close this so that way we can prepare for the next hour of sessions. Um, can you explain the difference between a registered contract and an active contract briefly? Um, and then what's the difference between advanced search and data feeds? When would you use one versus the other? Okay, so I'm going to read you the actual definition because it's right here. A registered expense contract is any expense contract registered in the fiscal year selected, which covers the period of July 1st of the prior year to June 30th of the following year. So that was a registered contract. And an active contract is any contract whose period of performance is through today's date. Does that make sense? It's still active and it's going to be active through today's date. So it might have been registered in a prior year and it's active through this year. A registered contract is also an active contract because its period of performance is through today's date. I hope that clears it. And then the second question was, I'm sorry. Uh, um, what's the difference between active search and data feeds? Okay, when would you okay. use one versus the other? Correct. I only use data feeds when I'm returning so many rows that I can't export them into a file. So sometimes you do an advanced search, you're looking for information, and there's 150,000 rows that it returns. And it's just too many rows to export into one file. So that's when I switch over to data feeds. I do that same search, and I can get it all into one file. Data feeds are just for much larger searches. For example, if you're doing searches on Department of Education, their stuff is so large, and it's so many transactions, that you're almost guaranteed you have to use the data feed. Where, you could, like the New York City Controls Office, you can probably do everything in advanced search because the return values are much smaller. Correct. I had to do a search the other day where I was searching for – specific spending across multiple years, across multiple agencies, and I didn't know which agencies had that spending, so I had to pull everything. So I got a lot of files. It was like 21 million rows of, of data, so I've got this incredible, huge file. The point is that when you're looking at, at so, such a large area, you just know you have to go to data feeds because you won't be able to complete it in advanced search. Gotcha. All right. Closing statements from the comptroller's office. Um, um, I, would, I would like to say I'd like to thank everybody for joining. I think the the more people that get familiar with checkbook, um, you know, the better the tool will be. We're open to suggestions for improvement, as always. So if you have any ideas or something that you like to see, I mean, you know, we're, we're growing. It's, it's not it's a not it's not a static application. We keep enhancing it. We keep integrating different components into the application as we see, as we need it. Um, so it's a, uh, so it's, again, any input would be great for you guys as to how we can improve it. 
Um, we know that sometimes you have searches that are not intuitive. So I just added my email address um, to the chat. Please reach out. I'm always happy to help. I'm always happy to take your personal inquiries and help you learn how to use checkbook better, get more information out of it. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you.